Hillary Clinton Business Head Office, Bo. Clinton speaking at an event in Des Moines, Iowa, during her 2016 presidential campaign. Clinton in 2016. 11th Chancellor of Queen's University Belfast. Incumbent. Assumed office. January 2, 2020. Preceded by Thomas J. Moran. 67th United States Secretary of State. In office. January 21, 2009, February 1, 2013. President Barack Obama. Deputy. John Negropundi. James Steinberg. William Joseph Burns. Preceded by Condoleezza Rice. Succeeded by John Kerry. United States Senator. From New York. In office. January 3, 2001. January 21, 2009. Preceded by Daniel Patrick Moynihan. Succeeded by Kirsten Gillibrand. First Lady of the United States. Enroll. January 20, 1993, January 20, 2001. President Bill Clinton. Preceded by Barbara Bush. Succeeded by Laura Bush. First Lady of Arkansas. Enroll. January 11, 1983, December 12, 1992. Governor Bill Clinton. Preceded by Gay Daniels White. Succeeded by Betty Tucker. Enroll. January 9, 1979, January 19, 1981. Governor Bill Clinton. Preceded by Barbara Pryor. Succeeded by Gay Daniels White. Personal details. Born Hillary Diane Rotham. October 26, 1947, age 74. Chicago, Illinois, U.S. Political Party Democratic, 1968 present. Other political affiliations Republican, before 1968. Spouses Bill Clinton M. 1975. Children Chelsea Clinton. Parents. Hugh Rodham. Dorothy Howell. Residence. Chappaqua, New York, U.S. Washington, D.C., U.S. Northern Ireland, U.K. Education Wellesley College, B.A. Yale University, J.D. Awards List of Honors and Awards. Signature. Website Official Website. Hillary Clinton by Gage Skidmore 2.jpg This article is part of a series about Hillary Clinton Political Positions Electoral History First Lady of the United States Roll Health Care Plan Skip Whitwater and Other Investigations Response to Lewinsky Scandal U.S. Senator from New York Tenure 2000 Election 2006 Re-Election U.S. Secretary of State Tenure Foreign Trips Benghazi Attack Obama's Foreign Policy Dremail Controversy Hillary Doctrine Presidential Campaigns Organizations Clinton Foundation State Department Controversy Onward Together Honors and Awards Bibliography Hillary Rodham Clinton Signature. SVG Seal of the United States Secretary of State. SVG Vt. Hillary Diane Rodham Clinton Nee Rodham, born October 26, 1947, is an American politician, diplomat, lawyer, writer, and public speaker who served as the 67th United States Secretary of State from 2009 to 2013, as a United States Senator from New York from 2001 to 2009, and as First Lady of the United States from 1993 to 2001 as the wife of President Bill Clinton. A member of the Democratic Party, she was the party's nominee for president in the 2016 presidential election, becoming the first woman to win a presidential nomination by a major U.S. political party. Clinton won the popular vote in the election, making her the first woman to do so. However, she failed to win the Electoral College. Raised in the Chicago suburb of Park Ridge Rodham graduated from Wellesley College in 1969 and earned a Juris Doctor from Yale Law School in 1973. After serving as a Congressional Legal Counsel, 
she moved to Arkansas and married future President Bill Clinton in 1975, the two had met at Yale. In 1977, Clinton co-founded Arkansas Advocates for Children and Families. She was appointed the first female chair of the Legal Services Corporation in 1978 and became the first female partner at Little Rock's Rose Law Firm the following year. The National Law Journal twice listed her as one of the hundred most influential lawyers in America. Clinton was the First Lady of Arkansas from 1979 to 1981 and again from 1983 to 1992. As the First Lady of the United States, Clinton advocated for health care reform. In 1994, her major initiative, the Clinton Health Care Plan, failed to gain approval from Congress. In 1997 and 1999, Clinton played a leading role in advocating the creation of the State Children's Health Insurance Program, the Adoption and Safe Families Act, and the Foster Care Independence Act. Clinton advocated for gender equality at the 1995 UN Conference on Women. Her marital relationship came under public scrutiny during the Lewinsky scandal, which led her to issue a statement that reaffirmed her commitment to the marriage. In 2000, Clinton was elected as the first female senator from New York and became the first First Lady to simultaneously hold elected office, and then the first former First Lady to serve in the Senate. She was re-elected in 2006 and chaired the Senate Democratic Steering and Outreach Committee from 2003 to 2007. During her Senate tenure, Clinton advocated for medical benefits for first responders whose health was damaged in the September 11th attacks. 1. She supported the resolution authorizing the Iraq War in 2002 but opposed the surge of U.S. troops in 2007. In 2008, Clinton ran for president but was defeated by eventual winner Barack Obama in the Democratic primaries. Clinton was U.S. Secretary of State in the first term of the Obama administration from 2009 to 2013. During her tenure, Clinton established the Quadrennial Diplomacy and Development Review. She responded to the Arab Spring by advocating military intervention in Libya but was harshly criticized by Republicans for the failure to prevent or adequately respond to the 2012 Benghazi attack. Clinton helped to organize a diplomatic isolation and a regime of international sanctions against Iran in an effort to force it to curtail its nuclear program. This effort eventually led to the multinational JCPOA nuclear agreement in 2015. Her use of a private email server when she was Secretary of State was the subject of intense scrutiny, while no charges were filed against Clinton. The email controversy was the single most covered topic during the 2016 presidential election. Clinton made a second presidential run in 2016. After winning the Democratic nomination, she ran in the general election with Virginia Senator Tim Kaine as her running mate. Clinton lost the presidential election to Republican opponent Donald Trump in the Electoral College despite winning a plurality of the popular vote. Following her loss, she wrote her third memoir, What Happened, and launched Onward Together, a political action organization dedicated to fundraising for progressive political groups. Since January 2020, she has been the Chancellor of Queen's University Belfast in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Contents 1. Early Life and Education 1.1 Early Life 1.2 Wellesley College Years 1.3 Yale Law School and Postgraduate Studies 2. Marriage, Family, Legal Career and First Ladyship of Arkansas 2.1 From the East Coast to Arkansas 2.2 Early Arkansas Years 2.3 Later Arkansas Years 2.4 Bill Clinton Presidential Campaign of 1992 3 First Lady of the United States 1993 to 2001 3.1 health care and other policy initiatives 3.2 whitewater and other investigations 3.3 it takes a village release and tour 3.4 response to lewinsky scandal 3.5 other books and initiatives 3.6 traditional duties for u.s senate 2001 to 2009 
4.1 2000 U.S. Senate election 4.2 First Term 4.3 2006 Re-election Campaign 4.4 Second Term 5 2008 Presidential Campaign 6 Secretary of State, 2009-2013 6.1 Nomination and Confirmation 6.2 First Half of Tenure 6.3 Second Half of Tenure 6.4 Overall Themes 6.5 Benghazi Attack and Subsequent Hearings 7 Email Controversy 8 Clinton Foundation, Hard Choices, and Speeches 9 2016 Presidential Campaign 10 Post-2016 Election Activities 10.1 Political Actions 10.1.1 Comments on President Trump 10.1.2 Comments on Politics During the Biden Administration 10.2 Writing Career 10.3 Media Ventures 10.4 Chancellor of Queen's University Belfast 11 Political Positions 12 Religious Views 13 Cultural and Political Image 14 Electoral History 14.1 2000 Senate Election 14.2 2006 Senate Election 14.3 2008 Presidential Election 14.4 2016 Presidential Election 15 Books and Recordings 16 Ancestry 17 See Also 18 Notes 19 References 19.1 Citations 19.2 Sources Cited 20 External Links 20.1 Official 20.2 Media Coverage 20.3 Other Early Life and Education Early Life Museum Display Case Containing Photographs, Papers, Shoes, Doll, and Other Early Childhood Artifacts of Hillary Rodham's Early Life Mementos of Hillary Rodham's Early Life, shown at the William J. Clinton Presidential Center. Hillary Diane Rodham II, was born on October 26, 1947, at Edgewater Medical Center in Chicago, Illinois. 3 4. She was raised in a United Methodist family who first lived in Chicago. When she was three years old, her family moved to the Chicago suburb of Park Ridge. 5. Her father, Hugh Rodham was of English and Welsh descent, six, and managed a small but successful textile business, which he had founded. Seven, her mother, Dorothy Howell, was a homemaker of Dutch, English, French-Canadian, from Quebec, Scottish, and Welsh descent. Six eight nine, she had two younger brothers, Hugh and Tony. Ten, Rotham in Maine South High School's 1965 yearbook. As a child, Rodham was a favorite student among her teachers at the public school she attended in Park Ridge. 11. She participated in swimming and softball and earned numerous badges as a brownie and a Girl Scout. 11. She has often told the story 12 13 14, of being inspired by U.S. efforts during the space race and sending a letter to NASA around 1961 asking what she could do to become an astronaut only to be informed that women were not being accepted into the program. 15. She attended Maine East High School, where she participated in the student council and school newspaper and was selected for the National Honor Society. 316. She was elected class vice president for her junior year but then lost the election for class president for her senior year against two boys, one of whom told her that you are really stupid if you think a girl can be elected president. 17. For her senior year, she and other students were transferred to the then new Maine South High School. There she was a national merit finalist and was voted most likely to succeed. She graduated in 1965 in the top 5% of her class. 18. Rotham's mother wanted her to have an independent, professional career. 9. Her father, who was otherwise a traditionalist felt that his daughter's abilities and opportunities should not be limited by gender. 19. She was raised in a politically conservative household. 9. 
and she helped canvas Chicago's South Side at age 13 after the very close 1960 U.S. presidential election. She saw evidence of electoral fraud, such as voting list entries showing addresses that were empty lots, against Republican candidate Richard Nixon, 20, and later volunteered to campaign for Republican candidate Barry Goldwater in the 1964 election. 21. Rotham's early political development was shaped mostly by her high school history teacher, like her father, a fervent anti-communist, who introduced her to Goldwater's The Conscience of a Conservative and by her Methodist youth minister, like her mother, concerned with issues of social justice, with whom she saw and afterwards briefly met, civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. at a 1962 speech in Chicago's Orchestra Hall. 22. Wellesley College Years Rodham, Center, campaigning for Wellesley College Government President in 1968, an election which she later won. In 1965, Rodham enrolled at Wellesley College, where she majored in political science. 23-24, during her first year, she was president of the Wellesley Young Republicans. 25-26, as the leader of this Rockefeller Republican-oriented group, 27, she supported the elections of moderate Republicans John Lindsay to mayor of New York City and Massachusetts Attorney General Edward Brooke to the United States Senate. 28, she later stepped down from this position. In 2003, Clinton would write that her views concerning the civil rights movement and the Vietnam War were changing in her early college years. 25. In a letter to her youth minister at that time, she described herself as a mind conservative and a heart liberal. 29. In contrast to the factions in the 1960s that advocated radical actions against the political system, she sought to work for change within it. 3031. By her junior year, Rodham became a supporter of the anti war presidential nomination campaign of Democrat Eugene McCarthy. 32. In early 1968, she was elected president of the Wellesley College Government Association, a position she held until early 1969. 3033, following the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., Rodham organized a two-day student strike and worked with Wellesley's black students to recruit more black students and faculty. 32. In her student government role, she played a role in keeping Wellesley from being embroiled in the student disruptions common to other colleges. 3034, a number of her fellow students thought she might someday become the first female president of the United States. 30. To help her better understand her changing political views, Professor Alan Schechter assigned Rodham to intern at the House Republican Conference and she attended the Wellesley in Washington summer program. 32. Rodham was invited by moderate New York Republican Representative Charles Goodell to help Governor Nelson Rockefeller's late-entry campaign for the Republican nomination. 32. Rodham attended the 1968 Republican National Convention in Miami Beach. However, she was upset by the way Richard Nixon's campaign portrayed Rockefeller and by what she perceived as the convention's veiled racist messages, and she left the Republican Party for good. 32. Rodham wrote her senior thesis, a critique of the tactics of radical community organizer Saul Alinsky, under Professor Schechter. 35. Years later, while she was the first lady, Access to her thesis was restricted at the request of the White House and it became the subject of some speculation. The thesis was later released. 35. In 1969, she graduated with a Bachelor of Arts, 36, with departmental honors in political science. 35. After some fellow seniors requested that the college administration allow a student speaker at commencement, she became the first student in Wellesley College history to speak at the event. Her address followed that of the commencement speaker, Senator Edward Brooke. 33-37, after her speech, she received a standing ovation that lasted seven minutes. 30-38-39, she was featured in an article published in Life magazine, 40-41, because of the response to a part of her speech that criticized Senator Brooke. 37. 
She also appeared on Irv Kupsenet's nationally syndicated television talk show as well as in Illinois and New England newspapers. 42, she was asked to speak at the 50th anniversary convention of the League of Women Voters in Washington, D.C., the next year. 43, that summer, she worked her way across Alaska, washing dishes in Mount McKinley National Park and sliming salmon in a fish processing cannery in Valdez, which fired her and shut down overnight when she complained about unhealthy conditions. 44. Yale Law School and Postgraduate Studies Rodham then entered Yale Law School, where she was on the editorial board of the Yale Review of Law and Social Action. 45. During her second year, she worked at the Yale Child Study Center. 46. Learning about new research on early childhood brain development and working as a research assistant on the seminal work, Beyond the Best Interests of the Child, 1973. 47-48. She also took on cases of child abuse at Yale New Haven Hospital, 47, and volunteered at New Haven Legal Services to provide free legal advice for the poor. 46, in the summer of 1970, she was awarded a grant to work at Marion Wright Edelman's Washington Research Project, where she was assigned to Senator Walter Mondale's Subcommittee on Migratory Labor. There she researched various migrant workers' issues including education, health and housing. 49. Edelman later became a significant mentor. 50. Rodham was recruited by political advisor Ann Wexler to work on the 1970 campaign of Connecticut U.S. Senate candidate Joseph Duffy. Rodham later crediting Wexler with providing her first job in politics. 51. In the spring of 1971, she began dating fellow law student Bill Clinton. During the summer, she interned at the Oakland, California, law firm of Drehoft, Walker, and Bernstein. The firm was well known for its support of constitutional rights, civil liberties and radical causes, two of its four partners were current or former Communist Party members, 52, Rodham worked on child custody and other cases. A. Clinton cancelled his original summer plans and moved to live with her in California. 56. The couple continued living together in New Haven when they returned to law school. 53. The following summer, Rodham and Clinton campaigned in Texas for unsuccessful 1972 Democratic presidential candidate George McGovern. 57. She received a Juris Doctor degree from Yale in 1973. 36 having stayed on an extra year to be with Clinton. 58, he first proposed marriage to her following graduation, but she declined, uncertain if she wanted to tie her future to his. 58. Rodham began a year of postgraduate study on children and medicine at the Yale Child Study Center. 59, in late 1973, her first scholarly article, Children Under the Law, was published in the Harvard Educational Review. 60. Discussing the new children's rights movement, the article stated that child citizens were powerless individuals, 61, and argued that children should not be considered equally incompetent from birth to attaining legal age, but instead that courts should presume competence on a case-by-case -case basis, except when there is evidence otherwise. 62. The article became frequently cited in the field. 63. Marriage, Family, Legal Career and First Ladyship of Arkansas From the East Coast to Arkansas During her postgraduate studies, Rodham was staff attorney for Edelman's newly founded Children's Defense Fund in Cambridge, Massachusetts, 64, and as a consultant to the Carnegie Council on Children. 65, in 1974. She was a member of the impeachment inquiry staff in Washington, D.C., and advised the House Committee on the Judiciary during the Watergate scandal. 66. Under the guidance of Chief Counsel John Doerr and senior member Bernard W. Nussbaum, 47, Rodham helped research procedures of impeachment and the historical grounds and standards for it. 66. The committee's work culminated with the resignation of President Richard Nixon in August 1974. 66. By then, Rodham was viewed as someone with a bright political future. 
Democratic political organizer and consultant Betsy Wright moved from Texas to Washington the previous year to help guide Rodham's career. 67, Wright thought Rodham had the potential to become a future senator or president. 68, meanwhile, boyfriend Bill Clinton had repeatedly asked Rodham to marry him, but she continued to demur. 69, after failing the District of Columbia Bar Exam 70, and passing the Arkansas exam, Rodham came to a key decision. As she later wrote, I chose to follow my heart instead of my head. 71, she thus followed Clinton to Arkansas, rather than staying in Washington, where career prospects were brighter. He was then teaching law and running for a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives in his home state. In August 1974, Rodham moved to Fayetteville, Arkansas, and became one of only two female faculty members in the School of Law at the University of Arkansas, Fayetteville. 72-73 Early Arkansas Years At the university, Rodham taught classes in criminal law. She was considered a rigorous teacher who was tough with her grades. 74, Rodham became the first director of a new legal aid clinic at the school, where she secured support from the local bar association and gained federal funding. 75, as a court-appointed lawyer, Rodham was required to act as defense counsel to a man accused of raping a 12-year-old girl, after her request to be relieved of the assignment failed. Rodham used an effective defense and counseled her client to plead guilty to a lesser charge. She has called the trial a terrible case. 76. During her time in Fayetteville, Rodham and several other women founded the city's first rape crisis center. 75. In 1974, Bill Clinton lost an Arkansas congressional race, facing incumbent Republican John Paul Hammerschmidt. 77. Rodham and Bill Clinton bought a house in Fayetteville in the summer of 1975 and she agreed to marry him. 78, the wedding took place on October 11, 1975, in a Methodist ceremony in their living room. 79, a story about the marriage in the Arkansas Gazette indicated that she decided to retain the name Hillary Rodham. 7980, her motivation was threefold. She wanted to keep the couple's professional lives separate, avoid apparent conflicts of interest, and as she told a friend at the time, it showed that I was still me. 81, the decision upset both mothers, who were more traditional. 82. In 1976, Rodham temporarily relocated to Indianapolis to work as an Indiana state campaign organizer for the presidential campaign of Jimmy Carter. 83-84, in November 1976, Bill Clinton was elected Arkansas Attorney General, and the couple moved to the state capital of Little Rock. 77, in February 1977, Rodham joined the venerable Rose Law Firm, a bastion of Arkansan political and economic influence. 85, she specialized in patent infringement and intellectual property law 45, while working pro bono in child advocacy, 86, she rarely performed litigation work in court. 87. Rodham maintained her interest in children's law and family policy, publishing the scholarly articles Children's Policies, Abandonment and Neglect in 1977-88, and Children's Rights. A Legal Perspective in 1979. 89. The latter continued her argument that children's legal competence depended upon their age and other circumstances and that in serious medical rights cases, judicial intervention was sometimes warranted. An American Bar Association chair later said, Her articles were important, not because they were radically new but because they helped formulate something that had been inchoate. 62. Historian Gary Wills would later describe her as one of the more important scholar activists of the last two decades. 90. Conservatives said her theories would usurp traditional parental authority. 91. Would allow children to file frivolous lawsuits against their parents. 62. And exemplified critical legal studies run amok. 92. A small, one story brick faced house with a small yard in front. This house is located in Little Rock, Arkansas. 
Hillary Rotham and Bill Clinton lived in this house when he was Arkansas Attorney General from 1977 to 1979. Hillary and Bill lived in this house in Little Rocks Hillcrest neighborhood while he was Arkansas Attorney General, 1977 to 1979. 93. In 1977, Rodham co-founded Arkansas Advocates for Children and Families, a state-level alliance with the Children's Defense Fund. 4594. Later that year, President Jimmy Carter for whom Rodham had been the 1976 campaign director of field operations in Indiana 95, appointed her to the board of directors of the Legal Services Corporation. 96, she held that position from 1978 until the end of 1981. 97, from mid-1978 to mid-1980, b, she was the chair of that board, the first woman to hold the job. 98, during her time as chair, funding for the corporation was expanded from $90 million to $300 million. Subsequently, she successfully fought President Ronald Reagan's attempts to reduce the funding and change the nature of the organization. 86. Following her husband's November 1978 election as governor of Arkansas, Rodham became that state's first lady in January 1979. She would hold that title for 12 non-consecutive years, 1979 to 81, 1983 to 92. Clinton appointed his wife to be the chair of the Rural Health Advisory Committee the same year, 99, where she secured federal funds to expand medical facilities in Arkansas's poorest areas without affecting doctors' fees. 100. In 1979, Rodham became the first woman to be made a full partner in Rowe's law firm. 101, from 1978 until they entered the White House, she had a higher salary than her husband. 102, during 1978 and 1979, while looking to supplement their income, Rodham engaged in the trading of cattle futures contracts. 103. An initial $1,000 investment generated nearly $100,000 when she stopped trading after 10 months. 104. At this time, the couple began their ill fated investment in the Whitewater Development Corporation real estate venture with Jim and Susan McDougall. 103. Both of these became subjects of controversy in the 1990s. On February 27, 1980, Rodham gave birth to the couple's only child, a daughter whom they named Chelsea. In November 1980, Bill Clinton was defeated in his bid for re-election. 105. Later Arkansas Years The Reagans and the Clintons walking a red carpet during the 1987 dinner honoring the nation's governors. Bill and Hillary Clinton with President Ronald and First Lady Nancy Reagan. Two years after leaving office. Bill Clinton returned to his job as governor of Arkansas after winning the election of 1982. During her husband's campaign, Hillary began to use the name Hillary Clinton, or sometimes Mrs. Bill Clinton, to assuage the concerns of Arkansas voters. She also took a leave of absence from Rose Law to campaign for him full-time. 106. During her second stint as the First Lady of Arkansas, she made a point of using Hillary Rodham Clinton as her name. See, she was named chair of the Arkansas Education Standards Committee in 1983, where she sought to reform the state's court-sanctioned public education system. 112-113 In one of the Clinton governorship's most important initiatives, she fought a prolonged but ultimately successful battle against the Arkansas Education Association to establish mandatory teacher testing and state standards for curriculum and classroom size. 99-112 It became her introduction into the politics of a highly visible public policy effort. 80-112 in 1985, she introduced Arkansas's Home Instruction Program for Preschool Youth, a program that helps parents work with their children in preschool preparedness and literacy. 114, she was named Arkansas Woman of the Year in 1983 and Arkansas Mother of the Year in 1984. 115-116 
Clinton continued to practice law with the Rose Law Firm while she was the First Lady of Arkansas. She earned less than the other partners, as she billed fewer hours 117, but still made more than $200,000 in her final year there. 118, the firm considered her a rainmaker because she brought in clients, partly thanks to the prestige she lent it and to her corporate board connections. She was also very influential in the appointment of state judges. 118. Bill Clinton's Republican opponent in his 1986 gubernatorial re-election campaign accused the Clintons of conflict of interest because Rose Law did state business. The Clintons countered the charge by saying that state fees were walled off by the firm before her profits were calculated. 119. From 1982 to 1988, Clinton was on the board of directors, sometimes as chair, of the New World Foundation, 120, which funded a variety of new left interest groups. 121, from 1987 to 1991, she was the first chair of the American Bar Association's Commission on Women in the Profession, created to address gender bias in the legal profession and induce the association to adopt measures to combat it. 122. She was twice named by the National Law Journal as one of the 100 most influential lawyers in America, in 1988 and 1991. 123. When Bill Clinton thought about not running again for governor in 1990, Hillary Clinton considered running. Private polls were unfavorable, however, and in the end he ran and was re-elected for the final time. 124. Formal Color Portrait of Clinton, 1992 Clinton in 1992 Clinton was chairman of the board of the Children's Defense Fund 3125, and on the board of the Arkansas Children's Hospital's Legal Services, 1988-92-126. In addition to her positions with nonprofit organizations, she also held positions on the corporate board of directors of TCBY, 1985-92-127. Walmart Stores, 1986-92-128, and La Farge, 1990-92-129, TCBY and Walmart were Arkansas-based companies that were also clients of Rose Law. 118-130, Clinton was the first female member on Walmart's board, added following pressure on Chairman Sam Walton to name a woman to it. 130. Once there, she pushed successfully for Walmart to adopt more environmentally friendly practices. She was largely unsuccessful in her campaign for more women to be added to the company's management and was silent about the company's famously anti-labor union practices. 128 130 131 According to Dan Kaufman, awareness of this later became a factor in her loss of credibility with organized labor helping contribute to her loss in the 2016 election, where slightly less than half of union members voted for Donald Trump. 132-133 Bill Clinton Presidential Campaign of 1992 Clinton received sustained national attention for the first time when her husband became a candidate for the 1992 Democratic presidential nomination. Before the New Hampshire primary, tabloid publications printed allegations that Bill Clinton had engaged in an extramarital affair with Jennifer Flowers. 134. In response, the Clintons appeared together on 60 Minutes, where Bill denied the affair, but acknowledged causing pain in my marriage. 135. This joint appearance was credited with rescuing his campaign. 136. During the campaign, Hillary made culturally disparaging remarks about Tammy Wynette's outlook on marriage as described in her classic song Stand By Your Man. D. Later in the campaign, she commented she could have chosen to be like women staying home and baking cookies and having teas, but wanted to pursue her career instead. E. The remarks were widely criticized, particularly by those who were, or defended, stay-at-home mothers. In retrospect, she admitted they were ill-considered. Bill said that in electing him, the nation would get two for the price of one, referring to the prominent role his wife would assume. 
142, beginning with Daniel Wattenberg's August 1992 The American Spectator article The Lady Macbeth of Little Rock, Hillary's own past ideological and ethical record came under attack from conservatives. 91, at least 20 other articles in major publications also drew comparisons between her and Lady Macbeth. 143. First Lady of the United States, 1993-2001 When Bill Clinton took office as president in January 1993, Hillary Rodham Clinton became the First Lady. Her press secretary reiterated she would be using that form of her name. See, she was the first in this role to have a postgraduate degree and her own professional career up to the time of entering the White House. 144. She was also the first to have an office in the West Wing of the White House in addition to the usual First Lady offices in the East Wing. 59-145, she was part of the innermost circle vetting appointments to the new administration. Her choices filled at least 11 top-level positions and dozens more lower-level ones. 146, after Eleanor Roosevelt. Clinton was regarded as the most openly empowered presidential wife in American history. 147-148 Some critics called it inappropriate for the First Lady to play a central role in public policy matters. Supporters pointed out that Clinton's role in policy was no different from that of other White House advisors, and that voters had been well aware she would play an active role in her husband's presidency. 149, Bill Clinton's campaign promise of two for the price of one led opponents to refer derisively to the Clintons as co-presidents or sometimes use the Arkansas label Bieri. 99 150 151, the pressures of conflicting ideas about the role of a first lady were enough to send Hillary Clinton into imaginary discussions with the also politically active Eleanor Roosevelt. F. From the time she came to Washington, Hillary also found refuge in a prayer group of the fellowship that featured many wives of conservative Washington figures. 155-156, triggered in part by the death of her father in April 1993, she publicly sought to find a synthesis of Methodist teachings, liberal religious political philosophy and Tikkun editor Michael Lerner's politics of meaning to overcome what she saw as America's sleeping sickness of the soul, that would lead to a willingness to remold society by redefining what it means to be a human being in the 20th century, moving into a new millennium. 157-158 Healthcare and Other Policy Initiatives See also, Clinton Health Care Plan of 1993 Photograph of Clinton making a presentation sitting at a table in front of a microphone Clinton presenting her health care plan, September 1993 Hillary Clinton speaks about the 1993 health care plan at GWU Hospital In January 1993 President Clinton named Hillary to chair a task force on national health care reform, hoping to replicate the success she had in leading the effort for Arkansas education reform. 159, unconvinced regarding the merits of the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, she privately urged that passage of health care reform be given higher priority. 161-161 the recommendation of the task force became known as the Clinton Health Care Plan. This was a comprehensive proposal that would require employers to provide health coverage to their employees through individual health maintenance organizations. Its opponents quickly derided the plan as Hillary Care and it even faced opposition from some Democrats in Congress. 162 some protesters against the proposed plan became vitriolic and during a July 1994 bus tour to rally support for the plan, Clinton wore a bulletproof vest at times. 162. Failing to gather enough support for a floor vote in either the House or the Senate, although Democrats controlled both chambers, the proposal was abandoned in September 1994. 163. Clinton later acknowledged in her memoir that her political inexperience partly contributed to the defeat but cited many other factors. The First Lady's approval ratings, which had generally been in the high 50% range during her first year, 
fell to 44% in April 1994 and 35% by September 1994. 164. Republicans made the Clinton health care plan a major campaign issue of the 1994 midterm elections. 165. They saw a net gain of 54 seats in the House election and 8 in the Senate election, winning control of both. Many analysts and pollsters found the plan to be a major factor in the Democrats' defeat, especially among independent voters. 166. The White House subsequently sought to downplay Clinton's role in shaping policy. 167. Opponents of universal health care would continue to use Hillary Care as a pejorative label for similar plans by others. 168. Clinton reads a book to an African-American grade schooler in Maryland during Read Across America Day in 1998. Read Across America Day in Maryland, 1998. Along with Senators Ted Kennedy and Orrin Hatch, Clinton was a force behind the passage of the state children's health insurance program in 1997. This federal bill gave state support to children whose parents could not provide them health coverage. She conducted outreach efforts on behalf of enrolling children in the program once it became law. 169. She promoted nationwide immunization against childhood diseases and encouraged older women to get a mammogram for breast cancer screening, with coverage provided by Medicare. 170. She successfully sought to increase research funding for prostate cancer and childhood asthma at the National Institutes of Health. She worked to investigate reports of an illness that affected veterans of the Gulf War, which became known as the Gulf War Syndrome. 59. Enactment of welfare reform was a major goal of Bill Clinton's presidency. When the first two bills on the issue came from the Republican-controlled Congress lacking protections for people coming off welfare, however, Hillary urged him to veto the bills, which he did. 171-172 a third version came up during his 1996 general election campaign that restored some of the protections but cut the scope of benefits in other areas. Critics, including her past mentor Edelman, urged her to get the president to veto it again. 171, but she decided to support the bill, which became the Welfare Reform Act of 1996, as the best political compromise available. 171-172, this caused a rift with Edelman that Hillary later called sad and painful. 172. Together with Attorney General Janet Trino, Clinton helped create the Office on Violence Against Women at the Department of Justice. 59. In 1997, she initiated and shepherded the Adoption and Safe Families Act, which she regarded as her greatest accomplishment as the First Lady. 59173 in 1999 she was instrumental in the passage of the foster care independence act which doubled federal monies for teenagers aging out of foster care 173 as first lady of the united states clinton was the host for various white house conferences these included one on child care 1997 174 on Early Childhood Development and Learning, 1997, 175, and on Children and Adolescents, 2000. 176, she also hosted the first-ever White House Conference on Teenagers, 2000, 177, and the first-ever White House Conference on Philanthropy, 1999. 178. Clinton traveled to 79 countries during this time. 179, breaking the record for most traveled First Lady previously held by Pat Nixon. 180, she did not hold a security clearance or attend National Security Council meetings, but played a role in U.S. diplomacy attaining its objectives. 181, a March 1995 Five Nation trip to South Asia, on behest of the U.S. State Department, without her husband sought to improve relations with India and Pakistan. 182, Clinton was troubled by the plight of women she encountered, but found a warm response from the people of the countries she visited, and gained a better relationship with the American press corps.
183, the trip was a transformative experience for her and presaged her eventual career in diplomacy. 184. File First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton's Remarks to the Fourth Women's Conference in Beijing, China. Web. Clinton delivering her Human Rights Are Women's Rights and Women's Rights Are Human Rights speech in Beijing in September 1995, 2019. In a September 1995 speech before the Fourth World Conference on Women in Beijing, Clinton argued forcefully against practices that abused women around the world and in the People's Republic of China itself. She declared, It is no longer acceptable to discuss women's rights as separate from human rights. 185, delegates from over 180 countries heard her say, If there is one message that echoes forth from this conference, let it be that human rights are women's rights and women's rights are human rights, once and for all. 186, in doing so, she resisted both internal administration and Chinese pressure to soften her remarks. 179-186, the speech became a key moment in the empowerment of women and years later women around the world would recite Clinton's key phrases. 187, during the late 1990s, she was one of the most prominent international figures to speak out against the treatment of Afghan women by the Taliban. 188-189, she helped create Vital Voices, an international initiative sponsored by the U.S. to encourage the participation of women in the political processes of their countries. 190. It and Clinton's own visits encouraged women to make themselves heard in the Northern Ireland peace process. 191. In 1997, Clinton returned to Northern Ireland to deliver the inaugural Joyce McCartan lecture at the University of Ulster in honor of the community campaigner she had met during her visit in Belfast in 1995. 192-193. Whitewater and Other Investigations Further information on these investigations, Whitewater Controversy, Travelgate, Filegate, and Hillary Clinton Cattle Futures Controversy Clinton was the subject of several investigations by the United States Office of the Independent Council, Committees of the U.S. Congress, and the Press. The Whitewater controversy was the focus of media attention from its publication in a New York Times report during the 1992 presidential campaign 194, and throughout her time as the First Lady. The Clintons had lost their late 1970s investment in the Whitewater Development Corporation, at the same time, their partners in that investment, Jim and Susan McDougall operated Madison Guarantee a savings and loan institution that retained the legal services of Rose Law Firm 195, and may have been improperly subsidizing Whitewater losses. Madison Guarantee later failed, and Clinton's work at Rose was scrutinized for a possible conflict of interest in representing the bank before state regulators her husband had appointed. 194, she said she had done minimal work for the bank. 196, Independent counsels Robert Fisk and Kenneth Starr subpoenaed Clinton's legal billing records, she said she did not know where they were. 197-198, after a two-year search, the records were found in the First Lady's White House book room and delivered to investigators in early 1996. 198, the delayed appearance of the records sparked intense interest and another investigation concerning how they surfaced and where they had been. 198, Clinton's staff attributed the problem to continual changes in White House storage areas since the move from the Arkansas governor's mansion. 199, on January 26, 1996. Clinton became the first spouse of a U.S. president to be subpoenaed to testify before a federal grand jury. 197, after several independent counsels had investigated, a final report was issued in 2000 that stated there was insufficient evidence that either Clinton had engaged in criminal wrongdoing. 200. Chelsea, Bill and Hillary Clinton take an Inauguration Day walk down Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C., on January 20, 1997, when Bill started a second term as president. 
Inauguration Day walk down Pennsylvania Avenue to start Bill's second term as president, January 20, 1997. Scrutiny of the May 1993 firings of the White House Travel Office employees, an action that became known as Travelgate, began with charges that the White House had used audited financial irregularities in the Travel Office operation as an excuse to replace the staff with friends from Arkansas. 201 the 1996 discovery of a two-year-old White House memo led to the investigation being focused on whether Clinton had orchestrated the firings and whether the statements she made to investigators about her role in the firings were true. 202-203, the 2000 final independent counsel report concluded she was involved in the firings and that she had made factually false statements but that there was insufficient evidence that she knew the statements were false or knew that her actions would lead to firings, to prosecute her. 204. In March 1994, newspaper reports revealed that Clinton had earned spectacular profits from cattle futures trading in 1978-79. 205. The press made allegations that Clinton had engaged in a conflict of interest and disguised a bribery. Several individuals analyzed her trading records, but no formal investigation was made and she was never charged with any wrongdoing. 206. An outgrowth of the Travelgate investigation was the June 1996 discovery of improper White House access to hundreds of FBI background reports on former Republican White House employees, an affair that some called Filegate. 207. Accusations were made that Clinton had requested these files and she had recommended hiring an unqualified individual to head the White House Security Office. 208, the 2000 final independent counsel report found no substantial or credible evidence that Clinton had any role or showed any misconduct in the matter. 207. In early 2001, a controversy arose over gifts that were sent to the White House. There was a question whether the furnishings were White House property or the Clintons' personal property. During the last year of Bill Clinton's time in office, those gifts were shipped to the Clintons' private residence. 209-210 It Takes a Village Release and Tour See also, It Takes a Village In 1996, Clinton presented a vision for American children in the book It Takes a Village, and other lessons children teach us. In January 1996, she went on a 10-city book tour and made numerous television appearances to promote the book, 211, although she was frequently hit with questions about her involvement in the Whitewater and Travelgate controversies. 212-213, the book spent 18 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list that year, including three weeks at number 1. 214, by 2000. It had sold 450,000 copies in hardcover and another 200,000 in paperback. 215. Clinton received the Grammy Award for Best Spoken Word Album in 1997 for the book's audio recording. 216. Response to Lewinsky Scandal Further Information, Clinton Lewinsky Scandal In 1998, the Clintons' private concerns became the subject of much speculation when investigations revealed the president had engaged in an extramarital affair with 22-year-old White House intern Monica Lewinsky. 217, events surrounding the Lewinsky scandal eventually led to the impeachment of the president by the House of Representatives, he was later acquitted by the Senate. When the allegations against her husband were first made public, Hillary Clinton stated that the allegations were part of a vast right-wing conspiracy. 218-219, she characterized the Lewinsky charges as the latest in a long, organized, collaborative series of charges by Bill's political enemies G, rather than any wrongdoing by her husband. She later said she had been misled by her husband's initial claims that no affair had taken place. 221. After the evidence of President Clinton's encounters with Lewinsky became incontrovertible, she issued a public statement reaffirming her commitment to their marriage. Privately, she was reported to be furious at him and was unsure if she wanted to remain in the marriage. 
222, the White House residence staff noticed a pronounced level of tension between the couple during this period. 223. Public reaction varied. Women variously admired her strength and poise in private matters that were made public. They sympathized with her as a victim of her husband's insensitive behavior and criticized her as being an enabler to her husband's indiscretions. They also accused her of cynically staying in a failed marriage as a way of keeping or even fostering her own political influence. 224. In the wake of the revelations, her public approval ratings shot upward to around 70 percent, the highest they had ever been. 224. In her 2003 memoir, she would attribute her decision to stay married to a love that has persisted for decades and add, no one understands me better and no one can make me laugh the way Bill does. Even after all these years, he is still the most interesting, energizing, and fully alive person I have ever met. 225. Issues that surrounded the Lewinsky scandal left Bill Clinton with substantial legal bills. In 2014, Hillary said that she and Bill had left the White House not only dead broke, but in debt. The statement may have been literally accurate but ignored the potentially enormous earning power of ex-presidents who give paid speeches after leaving office. The couple would also have the ability to secure loans from banks. 226. In October 2018, Hillary stated in an interview on CBS News Sunday morning that Bill was right to not resign from office, and that Bill's affair with Lewinsky did not constitute an abuse of power because Lewinsky was an adult. 227-228 Other Books and Initiatives Other books published by Clinton when she was the First Lady include Dear Socks, Dear Buddy, Kids Letters to the First Pets, 1998 and an invitation to the White House, at home with history, 2000. In 2001, she wrote an afterword to the children's book Beatrice's Goat. 229. She was the founding chair of Save America's Treasures, a nationwide effort matching federal funds with private donations to preserve and restore historic items and sites. 230. This included the flag that inspired the Star Spangled Banner and the First Lady's National Historic Site in Canton, Ohio. 59. She also published a weekly syndicated newspaper column titled Talking It Over from 1995 to 2000. 231-232. It focused on her experiences and those of women, children and families she met during her travels around the world. 3. Traditional Duties she was head of the White House Millennium Council 233, and hosted Millennium Evenings 234, a series of lectures that discussed future studies, one of which became the first live simultaneous webcast from the White House. 59. Clinton also created the first White House Sculpture Garden, located in the Jacqueline Kennedy Garden, which displayed large contemporary American works of art loaned by museums. 235. In the White House, Clinton placed donated handicrafts of contemporary American artisans, such as pottery and glassware, on rotating display in the state rooms. 59. She oversaw the restoration of the Blue Room to be historically authentic to the period of James Monroe, 236, and the Map Room to how it looked during World War II. 237. Working with Arkansas interior decorator Cocky Hawker Smith over an eight year period, she oversaw extensive, privately funded redecoration efforts around the building, often trying to make it look brighter. 238, these included changing of the treaty room and a presidential study to have a 19th century look. 237, overall, the redecoration brought mixed notices with Victorian furnishings for the Lincoln sitting room being criticized the most. 238. Clinton hosted many large-scale events at the White House, 